This is Scott Loveridge with the North Central Regional Center for Rural Development. I'm pleased to be moderating today's session. Um, our speakers today are Heather Fisher and Dominic Fisher, both with North Dakota State University. Heather is a lecturer of architecture at North Dakota State University, focusing on the fundamentals of design and historic preservation. And Dominic is also uh, an assistant professor of landscape architecture, practicing landscape architect as well. And they've been involved with the study and practice of architecture, landscape architecture, and community development and preservation for the past 10 years. And with that, I think I'll turn it over to the Fishers. It's all yours. Hi, thank you, Dr. Loveridge. Uh, so this study began as part of a Master of Design Studies in Historic Preservation using Richardson North and this webinar expands on that research to include a multidisciplinary method combining geospatial analysis for identifying similar areas of disturbance in the Bakken region with expert and local interviews. We explore the resource-based town dynamics through the quality of life and local value assessment interviews. We analyze available preservation resources and recommended heritage preservation planning process for rural communities on the threshold of that oil boom. Today we'll be reviewing uh, the oil extraction history of North Dakota, followed by our GAS analysis for identifying those critical areas of disturbance, which led us to the threshold community of Bridgerton. Uh, we'll go through the application of our threshold community of Bridgerton and recommendations for preservation planning of that community, followed by any questions that you may have. Now the rural community or the rural development trends of towns near natural resource extraction require preservation planning methods by which physical, cultural, and historic content of that town are concerned through the boom bust and recovery cycle. Now the great growth rate of many rural North Dakota and agrarian communities continues, but the resources available of those forms do not reflect the needs of development. We use GIS mapping to identify threshold communities several site visits and focus personal interviews and examined existing planning policies and resources developed uh, preservation planning process. Uh, Richardson, North Dakota will serve as a threshold community case study to illustrate the heritage planning process proposed here. This process for identifying and preserving cultural landscape features can prepare rural communities to sustain their vitality beyond a boom period. This presentation demonstrates the methodology for preservation planning in rural communities utilizing self-assessment processes linked to appropriate professional services during stages of rapid development induced by the Bakken's region expansion. Okay, so a little introduction um, into uh, the Bakken region. Uh, the Williston Basin, um, which is um, the larger basin that contains the Bakken oil formation um, stretches 200,000 square miles through portions of Montana, North Dakota, Saskatchewan, and Manitoba. Um, it's so large that um, its development shows an arc of physical implications that can be seen from space. Um, here you see uh, this NASA satellite photograph of Minneapolis and then not much in between until you get out to uh, the flaring in the Bakken region. Um, the center of this boom is underneath Williston, North Dakota, um, here. And um, oil was first discovered in 1951 in the basin, uh, but it wasn't until recently, um, around 2005, with the marriage of vertical and horizontal drilling, um, using the process that most of us are familiar with now, hydraulic fracturing, um, that made this oil um, viable for development. So the cumulative oil production in the Bakken recently surpassed 1 billion barrels in North Dakota and Montana. And the USGS says that there are um, approximately 11.4 billion barrels of oil that are recoverable with today's technology. So trying to understand and quantify this amount of data um, requires the use of GIS software. And the first place that we started with this was to quantify cultural landscapes or those places that we wanted to um, preserve. Um, the other thing was that we can use it to anticipate growth areas. Um, so what we did um, was we analyzed a set of 
database design specifications through raster-based layers using uh, land cover, elevation, row density, workforce housing density, um, and cultural, culturally significant landscapes. I'm using the software then to anticipate um, growth and for this study um, particularly we found out early on is that there's an absence of well-developed local infrastructure, governance, medical facilities, law enforcement, recreation facilities, and so on. So the, the potential for severe impacts, especially during um, the early stages of growth for oil development, um, um, are very severe. So um, working towards an interdisciplinary process for identifying and preserving these critical areas uh, might help make more efficient forms of development for these rural areas. So for this study, um, we began by collecting well density and workforce housing data per county to analyze at which ranges communities begin to see significant disturbances to their cultural and physical infrastructure, mainly through the review of permitting or permits um, from the county. Using this data, um, we looked for a suitability range that ranks both the density of oil development and workforce housing units per county. We created a proximity buffer layer to target those towns that were on the fringe of areas impacted by oil development. Um, while any town within these development boundaries could benefit from um, the following proposed preservation process, we focused this study on towns that were likely to be affected by near future growth um, or those that may have less developed infrastructure. This model is intended um, to, to provide a template for other areas of oil and gas development that wish to anticipate physical disturbance and begin their heritage preservation process. So next we map the locations and sizes of workforce housing. Um, in the region based on the total number of units and created four ranges of 20 mile proximity buffers um, with thres thresholds from one unit um, up to 160 units built um, and the size of those workforce housing populations. Um, we removed the highest level of development to determine um, the critical fringe areas that had yet to be affected um, and identified um, here, only those towns that intersected oil well development at a density less than a quarter well per square mile and a proximity of workforce housing that had a threshold of 31 to 55 units. Um, the results of this analysis yielded um, 35 towns in an 8,000 square mile area or approximately 30% of the active drilling area. Um, this boundary is effectively um, identifying those threshold or fringe communities and a starting place for communities in need of establishing a preservation plan. This may also serve as a valuable um, as a valuable way of setting up funding zones for the state um, similar to an improvement district. Um, further cross-referencing of permit applications and population sizes um, can, can help to identify which towns might be in most critical need um, of the historic preservation process beginning. Um, so we'll walk you through Richardson, um, which Heather will discuss as an example for this process. Uh, a brief history on uh, Richardson. The town of Richardson, which is a population about 524 people, was founded in 1883 as a result of the Northern Pacific Railroad. And like many of these rural cultural landscapes, it has experienced uh, devastation by fire. Uh, depression, the coal boom and bust of the late 70s and early 90s or 80s, and the outmigration of re recent agrarian generations. The physical and spiritual presence of Assumption Abbey, which it was completed in 1910, and the Sacred Heart Priory, which was completed in 1960, provided this rural community with a distinctive cultural and social resources uncommon in communities of this size. Rise and fall of the cycles of development can be attributed to the dedication and devotion of long-term residents in this rural community, embracing the challenges of each generation. For the past 100 years, Richardson has regionally been famous for this Catholic Abbey, which you can see uh, background here. 
and also for the German sausage, but the Bakken oil boom is on the western horizon. Richardson is about to face its greatest challenge and maintain its unique character and identity through the boomtown development. Private stakeholders have invested interest in new growth along County Road 8 with resistance of investing in Main Street. The Main Street is composed of abandoned buildings, including bank, grocers, and drugstores. However, within the past few years, a new Senex store, a convenience store, and a grocer have been added immediately off the interstate exit, well south of Richardson's down, downtown. An ethanol plant can be seen looming in the east behind a deserted barn and a Halliburton sand plant to the west. Richardson's population followed the same trajectory as many small North Dakota towns from the 1930s until early 2010. Visible signs of age and neglect are still evident in the broken teeth of Main Street historic buildings. The abandoned houses, commercial and industrial properties, coupled with insufficient municipal financial support, have deteriorated Richardson's physical identity. Uh, vacant buildings have challenged repurposing empty parcels of land while limiting infill. Aging infrastructure and public facilities created financial burdens for the city that was already struggling, struggling with a lower tax revenue, a consequence of the declining population. Many historic commercial corridors along Highway 10 has experienced significant vacancy. The historic buildings have been lost by fire uh, victims of demolition by neglect. The following five focused recommendations provide guidance for implementing the heritage preservation planning process for Richardson. This plan is intended to encourage preservation by the owner as a primary stakeholder to these properties. Uh, through the local, county, and state incentives, the city's role is to encourage the plan by providing information, guidance, support, and incentives to the private property owner. The county's role is to coordinate preservation uh, partnerships with municipalities and state agencies and organizations while promoting public awareness for historic preservation, creating livable, sustainable, and healthy communities. And finally, at the state level, the State Historic Preservation Office, or the SHPO Office, appointed by the governor, supports the Federal Historic Preservation Program while creating programs specific to the cultural identity within their state. The following plan is intended to serve three basic functions through five focused recommendations. First is to create a platform for balanced discourse for stakeholders and officials during the local decision making process. The second is to recommend planning policies at the local, county, and state level. And lastly, linking subsequent projects to resource allocation and educating and connecting communities to those resources. So there are existing constraints to the balanced discourse within this community of Richerton, based on focus interviews and consensus among stakeholders, including local leaders, uh, government agencies, policymakers, clergy, owners, and community leaders. It remains divided between the heritage and growth models for preservation planning and development. The intentions of a local entrepreneur and most significant contributor toward developing economic and job growth focuses Development, development on the highway rather than seeing future in the significance of investing in the cultural renewal, renewal of Main Street. Monks, which have been full-time residents of the Abbey since 1910, and other locals are interested in revivifying the town center but lack the personal assets to do so, while the city officials remain cautious toward any substantial changes. So this chart lays out the funding sources and resources for the stakeholder at each level. Um, broken down into the federal, state, and the local. Now these are necessary to recognize and consider during the preservation process upon implementing a project. A quick analysis shows that there are currently no resources um, at the local level and the state and federal resources are poorly connected um, to those smaller So this chart, um, and this gives some feedback as to what the analysis led to for this proposed process, but this chart will provide uh, city leaders and owners. So before this, a state would look at creating um, and identifying those cities on the threshold. And once those communities are identified, 
um, a city could be given this chart. So for instance, Richerton is a threshold community. So once the state has identified that, this chart could be given to that community and we would start at this location. Um, the city then would focus on this first half and depending on the resources in that community, they may or may not have um, a planning office. Many communities of the size do not have a planning office and it would be recommended that they um, hire a consultant for this first phase. And this first phase is including an inventory of cultural analysis um, and what, which community institutions uh, should be a focus in the preservation planning. Once the community has identified those resources, we step down to a preservation consultant, which at a minimum should be hired at this point to guide the stakeholders um, or an owner through a project until completion. The town is considering the implementation of preservation planning parallel with a growth plan. A series of identifying questions should be asked during public meetings. These questions lead to the establishing a process of priorities within the physical and spatial form of a town. These questions specifically were asked of Richerton citizens to provide focus of recognizable and important community institutions. Identifiable forms that embody a town's legacy should categorize the community's resources. The recommended strategies for classifying resources is through community engagement and feedback, with focus given to civic buildings and spaces. The community of Richardson focuses on agricultural receiving distribution areas, school, bank, train depot, uh, retail stores, green elevators, recreation and cultural areas, including parks and cemeteries. Um, shells. Also sustainable industries and job creating commercial ventures such as the ethanol plant and sand plant. And also community events. This plan is an example that identifies which physical resources are advocated for preservation planning um, or preservation within the town of Richardson. The community context map indicates cultural resources that fit cultural and economic criteria. Although the current building collection fronting Richardson's Main Street has lost vitality and become disconnected from necessary daily activities, the existing building fabric provides potential opportunities that can be catalyzed by the historic preservation of key buildings. Assumption Abbey has a unique precedence near Boomtown Road and there is, however, a great threat to its main street. Single-use single steel buildings of a low investment value have replaced historic buildings that have been lost by fire or demolition by neglect. It contributes to the loss of local identity and value and pride in this sense of place. Many of these rural communities are in need of a call to action for focus groups. An advocacy group will provide the backbone to initiate such planning efforts and provide a platform of consensus seeking within the local in order to guide the local policy and decision making process. The group is meant to promote the importance of incorporating heritage preservation plan as an integral piece of sustainable boomtown growth while exerting influence through channels of public networking. Now, the State Historic Preservation Office, or the SHIP Office, may serve as a gateway for distributing resources to these communities. Also, the SHIP Office can direct municipalities such as Richerton, interested in preservation planning, to the North Dakota League of Cities. Now, the League was established in 1912 and was organized to build a body of knowledge by sharing resources with them. This may serve as a platform for these rural communities to encourage one another and um, support and edu educational opportunities. Many of these rural towns began as a result of the railroad. The initial growth and development of these towns are along Main Street parallel to the railroad. This typically provides a concentration of historic buildings and landscapes at these locations. Implementing preservation planning strategies organized around improving the quality of life for these residents while keeping the rural values creates a uh, stability of Main Street. 
Growth will attract and support new opportunities for jobs and businesses. And by investing in growth and renewal of historic town centers and ensuring new growth and development, reinforces traditional patterns. The rural community lifestyle may also be preserved while facilitating Bloomtown economic growth and opportunity. And with that, we will open up for any questions that you may have. Okay, so the, so the question is, how does one deal with lack of leadership capacity for these approaches? Maybe we should click back to um, the strategy here. So the idea with this form is that it may be something that initially the state can identify, um, um, but then this very first part is one that um, most small communities will be able to use for a self-assessment um, of what their project needs might be. Um, and we'd like to further develop this so that this chart would be something that can be live on a website with hyperlinks so that you could click um, to figure out where you might have access to some of the advocacy um, groups. Um, and like we said before, um, you know, a preservation consultant may need to be included earlier um, unless there is a planner available. Um, but I think some of the GIS mapping would be able to help um, the state identify which areas are most in need and then maybe direct this to um, whatever leadership there is in the city. So Scott asked the question, have you looked into the National Endowment for the Arts opportunities for smaller communities? And if so, how would that opportunity relate to your... You notice at the federal level there are a lot of um, different resources and what I've come to realize interviewing a lot of these smaller communities and their citizens is they're, they prefer autonomy and they like to find solutions at the local level. They prefer to find solutions at the local level. And I think getting them acclimated, um, beginning with helping at the local level, they'd be more um, apt to try at the state level and then from that to the federal level. Some of these small town citizens seem really resist resistant to resources and having external resources, especially beyond the state. Um, and I think it's slow introductions to financial support um, at the local and then the state level and then going beyond. Yeah, as the uh, that other chart showed, um, we did look at some of the national, state, and local um, um, local funding mechanisms. So um, the National Endowment for the Arts would work, would possibly work for some of these. And this is where this kind of needs to circle through. Oh, here, I'll do this. Um, is that if the city has a meeting um, and decides that they have a specific project, if they are able to click through here, through these advocacy groups, um, and then um, this might lead them to some of those funding, or maybe to possibly link, um, link the project to the specific funding if it qualifies for it. Um, if not, maybe they take a more traditional approach here um, using Renaissance Zone funding or tax increment financing districts. Okay, another question. Um, often a prescription is to seek a small success to encourage more participation. Um, what might be a small goal here? Um, we gave the example of, I think even just this very first um, stakeholder, oh yeah, um, stakeholder visioning meeting um, to produce a plan or an inventory. So you can list these questions, even if you list these, you know, six questions, um, and from it, you wouldn't have to make a map. Um, as nice as this, but even something that's on trash paper so that there is um, a plan or an inventory of 
existing or potential projects. Um, I think that would be a small goal that would be easily to process. And actually, our, our university leads some of these types of charrettes. Um, this could even be student-led. Um, and then that would be able to be connected um, to the SHPO office or to a consultant later on. Oh, good question. Um, Heather, do you want to? Well, usually um, communities have in the past contacted our department um, and asked for shreds, um, but I think it might be more advantageous to, again, use the SHPO office um, or even the league to get the information out there if these communities are um, interested to contact either the department um, or student um, shreds. Yeah, that's a good idea and um, one that we can maybe include in the final results here and possibly link that into this um, preservation chart um, so that the contact information would be on there. That's the idea is that this, we've done the analysis for kind of the cultural questions to ask and where the economic um, side can come from. Um, and then we might, you might be able to take this and to click on here as you're doing these visioning and this might either lead you to a, a consultant preservation professional or also um, to universities um, that are doing this type of work. Um, right now, I guess the answer to the question is how do you get on the list? Um, you basically call up um, our program director um, and then he'll, he'll link to one of our, our studios. Yeah, so listing all of the, the state offices um, and universities that provide those services in the region would be great. So the, uh, another question um, from Jen, um, any outreach to tribal entities there? Um, very good question. Actually, the Fort Berthold Reservation is um, right in the center of the oil development. Um, and we've done um, some work with some of the tribal entities. Um, and actually, this, this process might, um, we should think about it more thoroughly, but this would definitely fit into some of those tribal towns. Um, and then even through um, our tribal colleges, we may be able to link those together. Okay, so if there aren't any more questions, you're welcome to um, put them in the chat box. Um, or you could also contact us um, through email if you have further 